you guys are just stopping me, particularly from going in and using it. Yeah. I'm you guys are denying service because of my assistive devices. That is correct. Part two of a multi-part series featuring Guilford County, North Carolina. This video highlights Guilford County security guard, Vince Dougherty. Mike first met Mr. Dougherty on December 18th, 2019, while Mike was trying to get access to public records at the Guilford County Courthouse located in High Point, North Carolina. Mr. Dougherty denied Mike service by denying him equal access to the building, the clerk's office, and the public records. Mr. Dougherty acknowledged that Mike's devices are assistive devices, but he still wouldn't make accommodations or modifications as required by the Americans with Disabilities Act. Instead, Mr. Dougherty invoked the local judge's order banning the use of electronics in the courthouse as the reason why Mr. Dougherty was denying Mike equal access. But I have to like jump through a bunch of hoops in order to no, go. No, it's not really, I wouldn't call it hoops. Can I go in now? Can I? No, because I can't, they can't, I can't clear you to bring that in. Okay. You guys are going to uphold the, the county judge's order over federal law, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act, stating that I can, that can use these under, under the ADA as effective communication devices. Okay, no, I'm not upholding one over the other. Uh-huh. That's just, that's But you're just, not going to let me go in with them. So you would be upholding the, okay, the yeah, judge, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it, those devices that you're using yeah. for your, your, your disability. Yeah. It just has to be the same thing that's not allowed in the courthouse. And right. it has nothing to do with keeping you particularly from doing uh -huh. it. It's just the, the recording device. You just, you guys are just stopping me particularly from going in and using it. For those particular, yes. I'm, I'm using yeah. it on, you know, under what's protected under the ADA, uh, right? Yes, and I get what you're saying, yeah. and I'm not disputing Okay, that. okay. And I shouldn't have to jump through hoops to get access to public facilities, you know? So, sad. Uh, <laughs> All right, thanks okay. for, we'll try to resolve it this way, you know, okay. and uh, maybe, maybe get a better understanding at the security point too, if, uh, make sure that, that, that other people don't have to jump through the soup, because that's. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, okay. After obtaining a copy of the order, we discovered it includes exemptions for medical devices, assistive devices. Although Mr. Dougherty's initial demeanor was pleasant, his actions were discriminatory. He chose to improperly enforce the local judge's order over state and federal law and the U.S. Constitution. The North Carolina state law of GS 168A and the federal law of the ADA is clear that public entities shall not discriminate against people on the basis of disability. Furthermore, North Carolina state public records law, GS 132, permits the public to make their own copies of public records with their own devices. It also allows for records, inspections, requests to be conducted anonymously. The second encounter Mike had with Mr. Dougherty was a couple months later on January 31st, 2020. Mike has long-term memory loss and is visually impaired. He can't remember people's voices to associate who the speaker is unless the encounter was within a few weeks and the speaker said or did something traumatic. Mr. Dougherty assisted Mike with getting access in the Guilford County Public Health Department public lobby on January 31st, 2020. Mr. Dougherty was professional and pleasant and gave Mike directions to a mental health facility on the campus. Yep, here you go. Right here? All right. Yep. Okay, we have to wait. Hi. Oh, thank you. Got that one? Appreciate it. Oh, no, we got one yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Is this down the stairs and then? Yeah, well. When you go down, it's two steps a step. Okay. So you'll go down the first step. Yeah. Swing kind of a half left. Okay. Go down the second step. And the sidewalk kind of works its way half left until you get to the end of the building. So I, so I stay left? Yeah. yeah okay. Keep staying left. All right. And then it's going to be a gap and then another building and that's it? Yeah. You'll, uh, when you get to the sidewalk, uh -huh. you'll be in between the building. If you look to your right, you'll, it, if there's another building on your right. Oh, so it, the, it's the building on the right? Yeah, it's okay. the building on the right. Okay. First floor. All right, cool. Thank you. Uh -huh. Later that day, Mr. Dougherty again stopped Mike from entering the courthouse and invoked an unconstitutional permit issued by Judge Teresa Vincent. Mike rejected the permit for cause based on its unconstitutionality, especially as the permit included threats of sanctions against Mike should he use his assistive devices. Mike previously addressed the issue of the permit and ADA modifications, accommodations, for access to the courthouse via a phone conference with Faith Taylor from the state-level NCAOC. Ms. Taylor agreed to facilitate equal access and correct the issues with the Guilford County courthouses. I will, I will gladly 
gladly speak with them about your concerns. That's not a problem. I will gladly address these concerns with them. Mike's visit to the courthouse on January 31st, 2020 was checking on compliance following that phone conference. Mr. Dougherty was professional in his demeanor, but again, not in his actions, as he again denied equal access to the courthouse. Okay, so I, here we go. Your permit that you have. Oh, I, I your, don't have a permit. For your devices, uh, it's right here. No, I don't have one. Wait. Do you have a date on that, like when this was done? January 21st. Okay, I, I, I had a meeting with uh, Faith Taylor, who's the, uh, she's the disability coordinator at the state level in Raleigh. We okay. talked, yeah, so okay. she, she was supposed to send something down to the Gopher County, uh, Patricia and Stephanie. So that's what I'm here, I'm just trying to talk to Patricia and okay. find out what, what the uh, update is, because this was rejected on its face because it's illegal, unconstitutional. And okay, well, I, that's, I'm not going to get into what's constitutional, what's illegal. I know yeah. what I have in my hand that has been signed. The last encounter with Mr. Dougherty was on February 4th, 2020, at the Public Health Department, just a few days later. Mr. Dougherty tried to keep his professionalism, but got caught up in the drama as the administrator, Leslie Barbie, was raising her voice at Mike, and Officer Alfonso Boyce gloved up and shook his handcuffs, then told Mr. Dougherty to ask Mike to leave. Mr. Dougherty never told Mike to leave, but repeated the unconstitutional orders that if Mike didn't stop using his devices, he would be asked to leave. Dowdy also assisted with the takedown attack on Mike by taking Mike's white cane from him. Stop, this is assault and battery. Stop, help, help, assault. help, 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 somebody help me. Stop. In district court trial and in a recent suppression hearing, Mr. Vince Dowdy never lied about telling Mike to leave. Did you make contact with Mr. Nelson? Initially, no. Uh, when I walked in and seen his recording, uh, well, he was interacting with uh, actually Officer Roberson. And I went back because my director had called me, so I talked to my director, and then I, I went back in. Uh, Miss Barbie at that time was had came out to talk to him. And then that's when I interacted with him as um, the party to try to get him to stop recording uh, or he would have to leave the building. And um, did you approach Mr. Nelson? I did. What happened when you approached Mr. Nelson? Uh, I just approached him and, and made the same request that you turn off your re recording device or you would have to leave the building. He has been consistent thus far in his testimony that the ask to leave was always contingent upon Mike refusing to stop using his assistive devices. Stay tuned for the next part of the series where we address some of the other state and county actors involved. You, the viewers, can decide who would be worthy of belief.